and Lords Podcast. All right, and we are live. Iron Lord Podcast, LordsofGaming.net. I am Lord Cognito, and who is this fine gentleman in the realm today? Uh, hi, I'm Andrew from Mass Creation, and we're showcasing, showcasing Shing today. All right, so we're looking at Shing, and off the top, I love the art style, it looks really cool. For those who don't know, what is Shing about? Give us the whole premise about the game. Uh, so Shing is a game about slashing dem demons to pieces uh, <laughs> with your friends. Uh, we're trying to capture the spirit of old school beat em ups that you just okay. put in uh, when you have some friends over. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of our design is centered around the idea that we want you to have fun instantly mm -hmm. uh, with your friends with no like obstacles. Mm -hmm. And so basically that's it. All right, cool. So smaller team. Again, I'm seeing initial four-player co-op action that looks fantastic loving the art style so tell me about like the abilities of the characters things like that what are the things you can do in Shin because the game looks fun all right so the first thing we usually people realize is that we have a unconventional control scheme because mm -hmm. you control your character your attacks with the right analog stick mm -hmm. the, uh, the gestures you made on the right analog stick mm -hmm. translate into specific attacks so okay. if you flick for example, like for left, mm -hmm. you attack left. If you hold up, mm -hmm. you uppercut the uppercut uh, the enemy and follow it. You can do spins, half circles, and stuff like that. So a lot of analog, right analog control. Yes. Okay. Yes. Basically, this is the, the main main thing. And we have uh, like a free flowing combo system, so you can you can uh, mix and match different kind of combos mm -hmm. into like a real attacks, combo attacks with your friends. Uh, the basic premise was that we wanted it to be very robust but yeah. very very simple to understand okay most people just experiment with the stick for a moment and then mm. they could do like crazy 50 so we can get real complex with the combos yes. okay we like that we like that now again i'm noticing four player so seamless drop in drop out yes. uh for co cooperative play yes definitely you can drop in at any time mm -hmm. and uh, the way we the, the game changes the more people are uh, is the more complex enemies have attacks that will work very well in crowds. So they have like area attacks or they they you know they use different attacks the more people they are. They, it, so the game gets harder without it getting grindier. Oh, uh, and okay. what's more, you, at all times you have four four characters available okay. and they have different uh, separate health bars. Okay. So if you're playing alone, you have like four lives, and mm. if you're playing with your friends, everyone's on their own. Oh, cool! Absolutely. And you can switch at any time, actually. So if you get bored, oh, so you can switch. Okay, wow. Okay. So if you get bored of a character, you can just switch uh, to, now, to another. Now, how many characters totally are in the game? Uh, there are four characters in the game, okay. uh, and they have pretty similar abilities because we don't. There are two reasons. The first, we wanted you to be able to switch to any of them at, the, at any time because they do work as different lives. And we wanted to avoid the situation where uh, people have clear favorite or a character they dislike and they get stuck with it. You know? So what is going on right now? <laughs> uh, the story in the game is pretty basic. Mm -hmm. The story, like the the, the, the main true line, mm -hmm. because it's just uh, you. You're, there was an artifact that's very important for your people, and it got stolen. But the story is, is basic because we wanted to focus on the characters and their interactions. Okay, so basic story. So it's more character focus, you would say. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. So as far as level design, engine, what are we using? The game looks bright. It looks very colorful. You know, what I'm saying, what engine are we using right now? So this is Unity. Uh, that we whipped, whipped into shape. <laughs> <laughs> salute to whipping unity into shape. <laughs> Excuse me? I said salute to you guys whipping <laughs> unity into shape. Looks good. No, it's, it's, it looks good. It works well. Uh, it's, it, it got a uh, really bad rep, but it's a powerful engine that you can do some cool stuff with. And because of that, it, we put the game on all the platforms simultaneously, oh. unless something... So we're happen. doing simultaneous platform launch? Is that what we're doing? Unless Switch mm -hmm. gets, we need some more work. But okay. we are aiming at simultaneous release. Okay, cool. And also, I'm assuming obviously we have the next generation consoles coming as well. Will we be porting? Will we be also assisting those consoles? Uh, I think, yeah, it's a question mark. And I'm sorry, I didn't get this fine gentleman's name in the realm. What's Rick. your, I'm Greg. And what's yeah. your role on Shing? I'm the game director. Nice, nice. So tell us your perspective of what do you like most about Shing? What do you think Shing brings that's different that you love about the game? Well, basically, I love the, the 
that the control scheme, the analog stick, really works and people love it. Mm -hmm. Because that was the most scary part of when developing Shane. We, we really didn't know if the... If You're the, scared of that analog control, huh? Yeah, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, we already have some, some, uh, some, some people telling us during the beta that the right analog stick just went off. So, uh, yeah, it's very heavy on the right analog stick. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, if you have an old, old Xbox 360 controller, yeah, it might not... <laughs> that, that level of sensitivity might not be there yeah. for you to do what you need. Yeah, so this is basically, and I love the characters, I love the design, uh, that our approach to Oni demons, uh, demons and, and stuff like that, so yeah. For me, Shing is a is a basically a dream come true. I'm an old school beat em up. Uh, beat em up. That, that's where we come from. The old school, the yeah, beat em ups. Exactly. You know, the, the four players, the Streets of Rage, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, so that, these are games that I speak that to. That would be our dream project. <laughs> Doing yeah. so you, you hear that, developers? If you want to make a sequel <laughs> to, to Streets of Rage, any publisher listening, <laughs> these Shing, the team, they're ready. <laughs> no doubt. No. This looks a couple of beers into Greg, and he will just go off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, TJ, if you're listening. So, Lord, Lord Gene, any questions? How are you feeling about the game, man? It just blew my mind with that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing. Like, this is a Teenage Mutant Oh, my God. The the, uh, the twin stick uh, combat feels really smooth. I love the way it feels. Uh, it, it's fun. It's fun. It was genuine fun. It's a good game. So, so it, you, you're feeling the analog control? Does it feel intuitive to you, getting the combos out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it reminds me almost of, like, an, uh, an older NBA game where you would use like the stick to have more advanced controls or maybe even like Madden how you would use the thumbstick as opposed to uh, pressing the buttons when the controls got more advanced. You definitely feel like you have full control over the sword and where it goes. Awesome. Awesome. Now as far as levels, level design, how many levels are we looking at right now for Shane? Uh, so we're looking at uh, seven levels, but levels are pretty complex and each one ends with a set piece boss. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, and this should add up to about uh, six, seven hours for one playthrough. Okay. But in addition to that, we have like uh, something we call lore rooms. So, uh, we have some story and some dialogue in the game, but if you're playing with your friends, more often than not, you do not have time or you do not want to listen to dialogue. So those are optional. You can go in. Oh, so we could skip. You can okay. just pass them by and don't talk to people. Okay. Uh, same goes for challenge rooms. We have additional like combat challenge that uh, checks how well you know the system, and there's also they are also optional. Uh, and more, and uh, one more thing is uh, every level can be mastered, so okay. like beaten with enough cool moves mm -hmm. or uh, without taking damage. And this right. is the way we unlock skins Thanks, for characters. Right. All right, cool. So for, for these challenge modes that we're talking about, will we have like achievements and trophies to reward the player that is that's going and enduring these type of challenge modes? Uh, yes, most definitely. We, we will have a lot of time. The idea we have that we're implementing right now that yeah. uh, the game will reward you with a tiny achievement every time you do something cool. So like uh, cancel a, com a real combo and to catch the enemy before it drops the ground. Or parry a grenade and then kick someone into the explosion. You said parry. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, we did, you you hiding out moves. <laughs> All right, so tell us about the parry system. So uh, we wanted to have a robust defensive move set as well because nice. the old beat em ups were really simple. Like you inch the enemy and as soon as you entered the attack range, you had to attack or you had to get hit. Right. This didn't feel really cool, so we added dodges, da uh, so dashes that give you nice frames and uh, blocks mm -hmm. and parries. But uh, to cancel that, we need uh, needed more complex enemies. So right. the enemies. So yeah, how do the enemies combat that? If you, you're parrying and you're dodging, how do the enemies combat? Uh, so the enemies do much more than just running up to you and punching you in the face. Mm -hmm. We have uh, some enemies that uh, throw grenades, or they have shields that you need to hit specific parts of their body. Or we have like a, we're still working on it, but we have like a fencer enemy that will block your attacks. So you need to really mix it up so he just can't keep up. Okay. And then you can just parry his weapon at last moment and then hit him. Nice. Loving this. That's, that's nice to hear. That, you know, that, that, listen, you, you really opened my mind because honestly, I thought it was just simple hack and slash. I had no idea. We had par parries, counters. The enemies can do the same. So it's a little deeper than you, you guys are leading on. Yeah, well, the basic idea. Like was we loved beat em ups, but we also loved something like Spectacle Fighters. So nice. Bayonetta, Devil May Cry. Nice. So we wanted to put some of it into the game. So you can, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it was visible. You can uppercut the enemy into the air and do a crazy aerial combo and then cancel. 
and so we wanted to have a lot of this spectacle in the game and this was one of the reasons why we came up with the uh, analog stick controls mm -hmm. because you need a lot of moves to a lot of movement, more freedom, you're yes. not as restrictive yes. and we wanted to, it to be very simple because if you're playing with your friends you just give them a controller and if we're, in old school beat them up you would just say this is punch, this punch is kick, kick yeah. and that's it. that's it and we wanted to keep it like that so like this is analog stick, this is attacks, this is jump, <laughs> this is block this and is awesome this is awesome. I'm loving what I'm hearing. Now, as far as development, how far are you guys in development and how far out from release? So we are on the last stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, we are aiming for Q2, so the, the second quarter this year. Oh, this year? Okay, yes, because the, core, the core is done. We're just pumping out levels and enemies by now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will, it will happen. <laughs> uh, but we're on the right track. And the last question I got to ask, just for silliness, the name, the Shing, what's the significance of the name? Uh, well, as whole, the whole game, the whole philosophy of the game is just cool and simple. It's Shing is Shing, the jazz. Yes. Okay, so it's just simple. We're just, we're just going with swords clashing swords. <laughs> yeah, the main idea was the, a sword leaving the scabbard. So like, Shing. I love it. Oh, oh leave it. Oh, okay, yeah. I got you. I got it's you. Old school samurai movie. Dude, this is looking awesome. Dream Machines, Shing in the realm four play looks like cooperative play classic beat em up with a twist a lot of defensive moves a lot of cool things we're super excited about this we can't wait to get guys get closer to release you heard it here for gene is it iron lord approved oh absolutely it feels great the combat it feels real smooth lord gene approves so i'm in, i'm in you heard it here first iron lord podcast lords of gaming.net shing y'all be on the lookout for this one